My name is Lynn Santiago, Chief Engineer, Director of Engineering here on the USS Midway. I've been given the responsibility of maintaining 55,000 tons of American steel that's 74 years old. We have a need of exploring and determining the health of the USS Midway. So where can we find that would help us work smarter, not harder, minimal manning, quickly assess, determine where there are areas that need attention, and determine what areas are doing fine. Goal is to get down to this spot and take a snapshot. Well, all we want to know is what is going inside this dark place that is not accessible. So the device itself of what I've learned and watched it operate can, can get into those unique areas that a human being can't get into. The fumes of fuel are low. If you're standing with your height at 6'6", you're not gonna smell it. Those knee knockers could hide refrigerant gas that's trapped between this wall and this wall. So if a snake is going over, and all of a sudden that, that payload goes beep, 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 beep. And you're looking down the passageway and you're going, hey, there's a possibility a heavy gas has sunken below. So it gives you a, a perspective of down looking up versus a drone up looking down. And then you have a human being in the middle. With the ray device on, it would be recording the environmentals at, as it descended down into the space. Ah, see, that's perfect. So the device actually gives me a, a potential opportunity to go into pipes, areas that we still have not opened up yet. Does the FLIR camera take me a picture and go, hey, uh, it's dark down here, nothing is on, but then it spans the space and it sees an infrared spot on a plug or a wire. Take a 360 infrared at this spot. You're getting some heat? Really? Interesting. You may be picking up an electrical box that's still energized. You may have found something that I know it's not supposed to be alive. <laughs> the imagery was quite useful with the lighting mechanism that was provided. Whoever had the controls could adjust the lighting because the lighting was so powerful, which tends to be the most challenging thing of getting enough lighting in a confined space. So it was impressive that the controller can actually dim down, okay, and then see the image. That's good granularity, you can tell between Rust, good, rust, good. See right there, that tells me, from an engineer's perspective, they used a black oxide nut, which, was, which is corroding, versus they used the proper nuts, which is not corroding. The infrared was good, imagery was good, the video playback was good. I think I challenged the company to go, hey, you do the 360 stuff. They said, yeah, I have a 360 stitched image. It looked like to me as a one person operation. The snake itself was a lightweight that you can put around your neck like, uh, like my grandmother's boa. I didn't see any time latency, especially when it was doing it in reverse. You, it's like backing your car up and some of the engineering spaces we walked down to, they were still 10, 20 feet above our heads. And what was above our heads? More valves, more pipes, more cables. Now those strong magnets come in handy. You just climb that vertical beam. It has the 360 feature to it. Take a snapshot up at that corner in that area. That's a useful option there. Or climb on top of a major engine that shaped weird, there is no path. Take a snapshot on the other side. You, now you just saved me a bottle of Motrin, you know, climbing over, climbing under. And for me, it's the only way too that you have to explain and justify the funding why I need very precious money to do the repairs. In this day and age, you gotta show it, you gotta provide the data, you gotta present the data, and then you gotta explain to them why. I just know for Len Santiago that you have a very good unmanned vehicle that's shaped like a snake that will help us inspect, plan properly, provide deliberate, cost-effective approach. I like finding stuff that makes my work smarter, not harder.